Okay, we're going to have a look at parallel lines and coincident lines, um, graphing them and, and what they mean. So we'll start with a simple example of parallel lines in blue and green taxi. And we'll graph that. And then we'll do a theoretical example of parallel lines. And then we'll have a look at coincident lines, a simple example with two taxis. We'll graph them. And then we'll look at a theoretical example of coincident lines and what, what, what it looks like. Okay. So let's begin. So we have a green taxi and a blue taxi. And the green taxi's fare is $2 times number of miles plus $1. Now so let's make a little table for, for that. We'll have fare be Y. Number of miles will be x, so we have y equals 2x plus 1, a linear equation. And we'll make a little table for that. And put in numbers for x, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So x represents the miles, y represents the fare. 0 miles, 1 mile, 2 mile, 3 mile, 4 miles. For these miles, can you calculate the fare and write it down here? So press pause on your video and do that. Okay, now I'll do it. So it's 2 times 0 plus 1, 2 times 1 plus 1, 2 times 2 plus 1, 2 times 3 plus 1, 2 times 4 plus 1, and it should work out like this. If I go 4 miles, that's $8 plus 1, $9 is the fare. If I go 3 miles, that's 6 plus 1, $7 is the fare, and so on. If I go 0 miles, that's the fare is $1. If I go one mile, the fare is three dollars. Go two miles, the fare is five. Right. So that's the green taxi. Now, can you do the same thing for the blue taxi? Just put up a table real quick. Press pause on your video and do that. Okay. Now I'll do it. The fare is going to be the output y, and miles is going to be the input x. And the reason miles, the miles is the input is because that's what we start with. You always start with the miles, then you can calculate the fare. So the fare depends on your number of miles. So fare is dependent, the dependent variable, right? So we'll just make up some miles to put in here and calculate the fare. So this is going to be four dollars. This is going to be um, six and four. Sorry, two and four. Six dollars. <laughs> this is going to be four and four. Eight dollars. This will be six and four. Ten dollars. This will be uh, twelve. Right. So basically, we should know that the green taxi. If I go four miles, it costs me nine dollars. If I go four miles in the blue taxi, it costs me 12, right? If I go one mile in the green taxi, it costs me $3. If I go one mile in the blue taxi, it costs me 6 So we should know that. So the, the interesting question when we compare two linear equations is, for you know, for how many miles are these fares equal? Or for what x do they both have the same y value? That's the interesting question with two linear equations, with a system of equations. So you might, it should be obvious to you that... Um, which taxi is better, basically? Which one is better, do you think? Well, this guy is better. He's cheaper, isn't he? Because he's $2 per mile plus only $1 base fee. So this, but this one is the same uh, cost per mile, but has a more expensive base fee. So this is always more expensive, isn't it? Okay, so this is always the cheaper one. And then what happens when we graph them? So graph both um, taxi fares and see what they look like. Press pause on the video and try that. Okay, and now I'll do it. The green taxi is going to start with XY01. Then one three, then two five, then three seven, and four nine, and so on. So this is my green taxi right here. 
y equals 2x plus 1. And the blue taxi is going to start at 0, x is 0, y is 4, so x is 0, y is 4, x is 1, y is 6, x is 2, y is 8, x is 3, y is 10, and so on. And when I grab the blue taxi, and I hope you've done that by yourself, y equals 2x plus 4, okay? So you need to do these things on your own so you can discover these fascinating things by yourself. So, what happens when we have a situation where one taxi is always better? Um, well, there's, there's many ways of a taxi can always be better, but, but one way is just when, you know, the base fee is higher and the miles per, uh, the cost per mile is the same. And this is one example. In this example, we get parallel lines. The lines are parallel. They're always the same distance apart. They're like a railroad track, aren't they? So these are parallel lines. Now the question is, where do they intersect? What is the point of intersection? When are the, you know, in other words, for how many miles are the fares equal? Does that ever happen? So point of intersection, the answer is none. There is no point of intersection. So to this system of equations, there is no solution. There's no point of intersection. They never intersect. Um, and that's all we need to know. And obviously, what we need to know, but what we need to understand about parallel lines is, is, of course, they have the same slope, don't they? I mean, if you take this one, the green taxi, look at the rise over the run. If you take these two points, or, you know, start here, say, you know, you run one, and then you rise one, two. Run one, rise two. Run one, rise two. And that's the same with the blue. Run one, rise two. Run one, rise two. Run one, rise two. So the rise of the run for both lines is obviously the same. It's two over one or two. And you can see that from the equations. The, the slope m, you know, obviously the general form is y equals mx plus b. The slope is m, and for both of these lines, m equals 2, okay? But of course, for this one, your y-intercept b is 4, and for this one, your y-intercept b is 1. So we have parallel lines. Their slopes are the same, but they have different y-intercepts. So we need to make a note of that. For parallel lines, they always have the same slope, um, different y-intercept, obviously, different y-intercepts, and for parallel lines, we always have no point of intersection, so no solution for parallel lines, okay? And no solution is sometimes represented by this symbol here. It means, there, it means you know, nil, null, null, or nothing. There's no solution, so nothing. I might see that in the back of your book. Um, so let's look at a you know a theoretical example of this. Um, y minus x equals two and x minus y equals negative five. <clears throat> when we do not have y on its own on one side, we need to find it on its own, right? So first we've got to get that y by itself. So to get y all on its own on, the, on one side of the equation, we need to get rid of the subtracting x. So the inverse operation is to add x to both sides of the equation, right? So if you add x to both sides, then we have y on the left, and then this is 2 plus x, or even better, x plus 2. Okay, now we need to give the slope of the y-intercept for this equation and the slope is, well, obviously, we can see that the y-intercept b is equal to 2, right? What's the slope? Well, how many x's are there? 
I just see one x, and so I can put a one there because there's just one x there, and so my coefficient of x is one. So I can say obviously my slope is one. So slope is one, y-intercept is two. Working on this other equation over here, again I have to get y by itself, and I have x minus y equals negative five. So I need to get rid of the x and then get rid of the negative sign in front of the y. Um, so to get rid of this x, I need to subtract x from both sides. Okay, and remember that you know subtraction is the same thing as adding negatives. So we could look at this as this is actually x plus negative y. So it's a negative y plus an x. Okay, so to get rid of the, the x here, we've got to subtract it from both sides, and that makes zero on the left. And on the and so on the left hand side, we're left. We still have not just y, but negative y. Don't forget, you have to have the negative on the left hand side there, right? And this is equal to negative 5 minus x, okay? Which is the same thing as negative x minus 5. And you should write it like that, because that's the same way, that's the same thing. I mean, if you, no problem to write negative 5 minus x, because it's just, it's just better to write it in this form in the end. y equals mx plus b, right? So in any case, we have negative y equals um, ne negative 5 minus x, we have to get y by itself, positive y. So we have, in fact, negative, negative 1 times y equals that. So we need to divide this side by negative 1. And if I divide this side by negative 1, I need to divide everything, all of this side by negative 1. In other words, each individual term. Okay, so I get positive y equals negative 5 over negative 1, positive 5 negative x over negative 1 is plus x. And to write it in mx plus b form, we've got y equals x plus 5. Okay? And obviously the y-intercept b is equal to 5 in this case. What's the slope? What's the slope in this case? The slope is, well, it's 1 because the coefficient of x is just 1 there. So we have m equals 1. So Again, m equals 1 on this line, and m equals 1 on this line. Because the slopes are the same, because we have the same slopes, that means the lines are parallel. We have parallel lines. And therefore, there is going to be no solution, because if I graph them, they would have the same slope. They would look like this. Okay, They would be parallel to each other. So there'll be no solution. Okay, coincident lines, and we've got, you know, again a green taxi and a blue taxi. So just do a quick table for these guys. We probably don't even need to, but I mean, it's kind of a silly example, but it's it happens. Um, this sphere is going to be rep. You know, y represents fare, so we've got y equals 2x plus 3 for this taxi fare. x, again, is the number of miles. And then the blue taxi, it's a different taxi now, it's a different color, but the fare is um, $2 per mile plus $1 base fee plus $2 for um, your luggage or maybe your dogs, your pets or something. So, you know, which taxi is better now? Which is the better taxi? Which one is cheaper? Well, are they both the same? Because, I mean, I can add 1 and 2 here, and I've got y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, which is obviously the exact same line, right? So both lines are the same. And obviously, if I graph those lines, I can make a table, or um, 2x plus 3, I can just do the slope-intercept trick. So the y-intercept um, on this uh, taxi, the y-intercept is 3, and the slope is 2, okay? Or 2 can also be written 2 over 1, so the rise over the run equals 2 over 1. So I can just, on the green taxi, I can start at the y-axis at 3. I can run 1 run 1, and rise 2, 1, 2, and then make a dot. 
See? Run 1, rise 1, 2, and make a dot. Run 1, rise 1, 2, make a dot. And I can just grab that green taxi, which is y equals 2x plus 3. Well, how about the blue taxi, y is also y equals 2x plus 3. And if I graph that guy, well, he's just going to be right on top of the green taxi. y equals 2x plus 1 plus 2 is what he was called, wasn't he? But, I mean, that's the same thing. We can see that. So the question is, the interesting question for, you know, the lines is, is, is often, for how many miles are the fares equal? Or for what x um, are the y's equal? For what value of x are the y's equal? For, in other words, you know, also where do they intersect? Well, you know, if you take x is 2, they both have the same output of 7. If you take x is um, 3, they both have the same output of 9, nothing. So here is a point of intersection, 2, 7. Here's another one, 3, 9. If you go 2 miles, they both cost $7. If you go 3 miles, they both cost $9. I mean, what about 2.5 miles? They both cost $8. Okay, so 2.58 is another point of intersection. And what about all these points in between? What about if you go 1 mile? They both cost five dollars, right? So one five is also a solution, another point of intersection. What about all these other points in between? What about all the fractions? How many points of intersection do we have between two lines when they're on top of each other like that? One goes like that, the other is on top. How many times do they intersect? Ten times? A hundred times? A million? A thousand? How about infinite? Doesn't it have infinite points of intersection, right? So, in other words, infinite solutions. So, when we have coincident lines, um, we have the same, they're the same lines exactly, Okay, they have the same slope, and the same y-intercept, y equals 2x plus 3, y equals 2x plus 3, and they give, therefore we have infinite points of intersection, so infinite solutions for coincident lines, right? So let's have a look at, you know, a theoretical example. 4x minus 3y equals negative 12. Solve that for y. Press pause and see if you can do it. Now I'll do it. I need to first subtract 4x from both sides because I want to get the y by itself. So I don't just have 3y on the left, I have negative 3y. This negative has to stay there. And this is equal to negative 12 minus 4x, or even better, negative 4x minus 12. And now get y by itself, I need to divide by negative 3. But if I divide the left, that side of the equation by negative 3, must divide the right by negative 3. So I can divide everywhere by negative 3. And get positive y equals negative over negative positive um, 4x over 3. And then negative over negative is positive 4. And 4x over 3, of course, is the same thing as 4 times x over 3 times 1, or 4 thirds times x over 1, or 4 thirds times x. It's the same thing, right? So we can write y equals 4 thirds times x plus 4, and I can give my slope and my y-intercept for this line. Slope is 4 thirds, y-intercept is 4. And now solve this line. Um, negative 8x equals 24 minus 6y. So press pause on, the, on your video and try this one yourself. Okay, now I'll do it. You need to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides. And always remember, I mean, you know, 
we cannot put the negative 8 and the negative 24 together to make uh, negative 32 because this is an x term, this is a number. I mean, these are not like terms. So we, on the left, we have negative um, 8x minus 24 is equal to, that goes away, negative 6y, right? Now to get y by itself, I need to divide by negative 6 everywhere, obviously. Right. So we have negative over negative, positive, and then 8 over 6, 8x over 6, let's see. Right? And this is negative over negative, which is positive. 24 over 6 is 4. And this is negative over negative positive. 6 over 6 is 1. So again, you know, it's like, that's just like 1y. Uh, and I can put this in those terms. 2 into 6 goes 3 times. 2 into 8 goes 4 times. That's 4x over 3, which can also be written 4 thirds x plus 4 equals y. So, I mean, that's exactly the same thing as this, isn't it? I mean, you can rewrite it like this, it wouldn't matter. 4 thirds x plus 4. This way or this way, it doesn't matter. But in any case, the slope is 4 thirds, the y-intercept is 4, and we have the exact same line in both cases. So all we need to note is that these are coincident, like they coincide, coincident lines, uh, so there are infinite solutions. Why are there infinite solutions? Because if you graph both lines, one will be on top of the other one. If you graph the green line, it'll look like this. If you graph the blue line, it'll be right on top of the green line, and so they will intersect in infinite many places, so there are infinite solutions.